Chinese naval vessel tried to force a United States guided missile warship to stop in international waters recently, causing a tense military standoff in the latest case of Chinese maritime harassment, according to defense officials. The guided missile cruiser USS Calpens, which recently took part in disaster relief operations in the Philippines, was confronted by Chinese warships in the South China Sea near Beijing's new aircraft carrier Liaoning, according to officials familiar with the incident. On December 5, while lawfully operating in international waters in the South China Sea, USS Calpens and a Plan Navy vessel had an encounter that required maneuvering to avoid a collision, a Navy official said. This incident underscores the need to ensure the highest standards of professional seamanship, including communications between vessels, to mitigate the risk of an unintended incident or mishap. A State Department official said that the United States government issued protests to China in both Washington and Beijing in both diplomatic and military channels. The Calpens was conducting surveillance of the Liaoning at the time. The carrier had recently sailed from the port of Qingdao on the northern Chinese coast into the South China Sea. According to the officials, the run-in began after a Chinese Navy vessel sent a hailing warning and ordered the Calpens to stop. The cruiser continued on its course and refused the order because it was operating in international waters. Then a Chinese tank landing ship sailed in front of the Calpens and stopped, forcing the Calpens to abruptly change course in what the officials said was a dangerous maneuver. According to the officials, the Calpens was conducting a routine operation done to exercise its freedom of navigation near the Chinese carrier, when the incident occurred about a week ago. The encounter was the type of incident that senior Pentagon officials recently warned could take place, as a result of heightened tensions in the region over China's declaration of an Air Defense Identification Zone ADIZ in the East China Sea. General Martin Dempsey, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, recently called China's new air defense zone destabilizing and said it increased the risk of a military miscalculation. China's military forces in recent days have dispatched Su-30 and J-11 fighter jets, as well as KJ-2000 airborne warning and control aircraft, to the zone to monitor the airspace that is used frequently by the United States and Japanese military surveillance aircraft. The United States has said it does not recognize China's ADIZ, as has Japan's government. To the United States B-52 bombers flew through the air zone last month, but were not shadowed by Chinese interceptor jets. Chinese naval and air forces also have been pressing Japan in the East China Sea over Tokyo's purchase a year ago of several uninhabited Senkaku Islands located north of Taiwan and south of Okinawa. China is claiming the islands, which it calls the Diu. They are believed to contain large undersea reserves of natural gas and oil. The Liaoning, China's first carrier that was refitted from an old Soviet carrier, and four warships recently conducted their first training maneuvers in the South China Sea. The carrier recently docked at the Chinese naval port of Hainan on the South China Sea. Defense officials have said China's imposition of the ADIZ is aimed primarily at curbing surveillance flights in the zone, which China's military regards as a threat to its military secrets. The United States military conducts surveillance flights with the P-3 aircraft and long-range RQ-4 Global Hawk drones. In addition to the Liaoning, Chinese warships in the flotilla include two missile destroyers, the Shenyang and the Shijiaz Huai and two missile frigates, the Yuntai and the Wufeng. Rick Fisher, a China military affairs expert, said it is likely that the Chinese deliberately staged the incident as part of a strategy of pressuring the United States. They can afford to lose an LST landing ship, as they have about 27 of them, but they are also usually armed with one or more twin 37mm cannons, which at close range could heavily damage a lightly armored United States Navy destroyer said Fisher, a senior fellow at the International Assessment and Strategy Center. Most Chinese Navy large combat ships would be outranged by the 127mm guns deployed on the United States cruisers, except China's Russian-made sovereignty class ships and Beijing's new Type 52D destroyers, that are armed with 130mm. The encounter appears to be part of a pattern of Chinese political signaling, 
that it will not accept the presence of American military power in its East Asian theater of influence, Fisher said. China has spent the last 20 years building up its navy, and now feels that it can use it to obtain its political objectives, he said. Fisher said that since early 2012 China has gone on the offensive in both the South China and East China Seas. In this early stage of using its newly acquired naval power, China is posturing and bullying, but China is also looking for a fight, a battle, that will cow the Americans, the Japanese, and the Filipinos, he said. To maintain stability in the face of Chinese military assertiveness, Fisher said the United States and Japan should seek an armed peace in the region by heavily fortifying the Senkaku Islands and the rest of the island chain they are part of. Though the United States and Japan should also step up their rearmament of the Philippines, Fisher said. The Cowpens incident is the most recent example of Chinese naval aggressiveness toward the United States ships. Though the United States intelligence gathering ship, USNS Impeccable, came under Chinese naval harassment from a China maritime surveillance ship, part of Beijing's quasi-military maritime patrol craft, in June. During that incident, the Chinese ship warned the Navy ship it was operating illegally despite sailing in international waters. The Chinese demanded that the ship first obtain permission, before sailing in the area that was more than 100 miles from China's coast. Though the United States military has been stepping up surveillance of China's naval forces, including the growing submarine fleet, as part of the United States policy of rebalancing forces to the Pacific. The impeccable was harassed in March 2009 by five Chinese ships that followed it and sprayed it with water hoses in an effort to thwart its operations. A second spy ship, the USNS Victorious, also came under Chinese maritime harassment several years ago. Admiral Samuel Lockler, when asked last summer about increased Chinese naval activities near Guam and Hawaii in retaliation for the United States ship-based spying on China, said the dispute involves different interpretations of controlled waters. Lockler said in a meeting with reporters in July, we believe that the United States position is that those activities are less constrained than what the Chinese believe. China is seeking to control large areas of international waters claiming they are part of its United Nations defined economic exclusion zone, that Lockler said cover most of the major sea lines of communication near China, and are needed to remain free for trade and shipping. Lockler, who is known for his conciliatory views toward the Chinese military, sought to play down recent disputes. When asked if the Chinese activities were troubling, he said, I would say it's not provocative certainly. I'd say that in the Asia-Pacific, in the areas that are closer to the Chinese homeland, that we have been able to conduct operations around each other in a very professional and increasingly professional manner. The Pentagon and the United States Pacific Command have sought to develop closer ties to the Chinese military, as part of the Obama administration's Asia pivot policies. However, China's military has shown limited interest in closer ties. China's state-controlled news media regularly report that the United States is seeking to defeat China by encircling the country with enemies, while promoting dissidents within who seek the ouster of the communist regime. The Obama administration has denied it is seeking to contain China, and has insisted it wants continued close economic and diplomatic relations. President Barack Obama and Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed to seek a new type of major power relationship during a summit in California earlier this year. However, the exact nature of the new relationship remains unclear.